And today I'm here to talk to you about Meraki's next generation dashboard. So before I dive in a little bit to what I'm going to talk about, I did want to briefly introduce myself. So hello, my name is Teresa DeCola. I am a product manager at Cisco Meraki, and I lead our de design system initiative. So I'll dive in a little bit about what a design system is and why it matters to our customers later. But what I'm really passionate about is creating the best experiences for our customers, taking customer feedback and making sure the features we put out are the ones our customers want. On a more personal note, um, I'm currently located in Canada, which is unfortunately why I'm not there in the room with you today. And I do have a very cute pet rabbit named Thumper. There's her in the corner eating some kale. <laughs> so before I actually dive into NextGen Dashboard and the UI components of it, I want to spend some time talking about Meraki as a cloud platform. As you may know, Meraki is the largest cloud platform in networking, and we're architected for scale. We have over 600,000 customers all around the world, and we have over 12 million active Meraki devices. Additionally, we have over 4 million active networks. So Meraki doesn't only focus on making sure that we can have a large number of devices connected, but we also want to make sure that our platform is scalable and allows users to do the functionality they want, regardless of how many networks they have. Something like changing a password can be really easy if you only have a few networks, but can be a lot harder if you're trying to do this at scale with multiple networks. And we want to make sure that those actions are easy regardless of customer size. At Meraki, we have a hybrid cloud, which involves our private cloud, which are Meraki data centers that are highly secure and we look after them. But we're also starting to harness the power of the public cloud to have a hybrid cloud. And there's huge advantages for our customers here as we're able to spin up operations in new countries and support our customers' needs even easier than before. In the past, Meraki is focused on a shard architecture, but it's important to note that Meraki isn't just focusing on UI when we're talking about next-gen dashboard, but we want to make sure that we're also focusing on innovation when it comes to our architecture as well. So we're moving away from just having a monolithic application and moving into using microservice architecture. By using Docker for containerization and deploying with Kubernetes, we're able to move into a microservice architecture. One example of a microservice um, or a service that we're using is for our global organization overview page, which I'll be demoing later. Um, this is a really great uh, example of how we're using microservice architecture within our platform today. So now diving into the part that I'm most excited about, which is our UI and the Meraki dashboard itself. So you may have heard the term next-gen dashboard thrown around on Meraki's social media, maybe on some of our YouTube videos, or maybe even at Cisco Live in June of this year. But next-gen dashboard is so much more than just a fresh coat of paint. We're really focusing on providing the best experiences for our customers, making sure we're scalable and performant. NextGen Dashboard really focuses on simplicity. But when I say simplicity, I'm not talking about taking away features or making sure you can't do certain things. It's empowering our users with the features we create to make sure that their lives are even easier, making things like configuration easier and quicker to do for our customers so they can get back to the things that they care about. Things like intelligence, having improved health insights, as well as guided troubleshooting are highly requested features we have from our customers, and they're coming down our roadmap. And also focusing on scalability. Like I mentioned, we have a global organization overview page that we're going to be releasing later this year and I'll demo later today that allows users to monitor multiple organizations in one concise view so they can understand what's happening across multiple organizations and networks in a click of a button. So this brings me to the part that I manage, which is actually our design system. So this is what makes everything possible with NextGen Dashboard. It's a series of reusable components that designers and developers use to create consistent user experiences across the Meraki Dashboard. So you can see we have a screenshot of some of our components here. There are things like buttons, um, graphs, charts, basically anything you can imagine that would make up a page on the Meraki Dashboard. And the reason why this is so important is because it can, creates consistent experiences across all pages. And this makes it easier to train network admins. For example, if you interact with a toggle one way on one page, you want to make sure it's the same across all pages to reduce confusion. We also have a focus on updating design and ensuring that we have improved accessibility so that dashboard is easy to use for everyone. And you see the bunny here. It's not actually just because I love bunnies. It's because it's actually going to help us iterate faster and create features for that users and customers want even faster. I got some great feedback from a developer a few weeks ago who mentioned that they were able to create a page using the design system 
in 1.5 hours when using the old methodology would have taken them five days. So this speed is really important for our customers because it means that we can take feedback, we can create new features, and we can iterate to provide value to you even faster. Now, it is important to know that this next-gen dashboard isn't just a far-out goal of something that doesn't exist yet. A lot of this already exists on dashboard today. You may have noticed in calendar year 2021, we re re released new fonts on the Meraki dashboard. What might seem like a small change was actually the first step towards our next generation dashboard as we were making it more consistent and readable. Then at Cisco Live this year, we released the public beta of next gen dashboard featuring brand new globals, which is a header, footer, and navigation, an early access page that allows customers to try new Meraki features first, a brand new landing page that enables customers to look at multiple networks in one concise view, and two redesigned pages that were created from the ground up using our design system. And rather than just tell you about these pages, I'd like to show you. So I know all the comments in the last presentation about live demos being dangerous is kind of scaring me, but I think it'll go well, so bear with me, folks. But here's a reminder of what dashboard looks like today. So if you're not in the next gen dashboard beta, you'll see this gray navigation, you'll see this top bar and this uh, footer at the bottom, but this is next gen dashboard. So as you can see, we haven't actually changed any of the functionality with our navigation. Everything is in the same place you'd expect it to be. However, we have completely redesigned it and added icons. Additionally, you can see for our header that it functions the same way, but there are some small changes, like we've moved our search bar to the right corner versus the left. Now, you might also notice the SNAZI page that I have up, and this is our organization summary page, which is the brand new landing page once you opt into our public beta. Here, you're able to view insights of multiple networks in your organization. For example, um, at, the, at the top here, you can see our health cards that summarize all of the devices across your network. So across your organization. So as you can see across my organization, I have nine security appliances right now spread out across multiple networks. And if I click this, it shows that all of my security appliances are healthy. But in the case that one of them wasn't, it would actually provide me with information about which one isn't, and I can click on it and then troubleshoot my network more easily. Additionally, down below, you're able to search your networks um, by keywords, as well as status, network type, and tags. So for example, here I have things broken down into branch, campus, data center, et cetera. And if I were to click on data center, it'll only filter to my data center networks, which makes it easier to monitor and understand what is going on. Now I mentioned we updated two pages using the magnetic design system as well. And one of these pages is the switch list page. So this was actually selected because it was one of the most highly trafficked pages by our customers. And you'll notice that we didn't actually change any of the core functionality. If you go on this page and you click on this little gear icon, you're able to select adding columns. So for example, if I wanted to add tags, if I press apply, it'll add this column to my table and I'm able to move around the different columns. I can sort each and every column in this table just like before. And the cards at the top allow me to filter by different statuses. So for example, I have nothing that is dormant for my switches. So you're able to see that here. So this is a huge upgrade in terms of the look and feel, as well as consistency with other pages from our old version. And just as a reminder, here is our old version of the page. As you can see, it does have a different look and feel to every other page that I've showed you so far. Now, I did mention that we didn't change any of the core functionality on the Switches page, but we are introducing a lot of great new features to Dashboard. And these can be found by going to Organization and then Early Access. So on our early access page, you can see the cutting edge Meraki new features that we're releasing. For example, we have the design system, which is the look and feel that I talked about, that brand new landing page that I just showed you. And you can also get early access to our API. So by being able to click here, you're able to see that for this early access API session, um, you can get an evolving set of in development APIs for software developers interested in providing feedback on API feature design prior to general availability. So it allows you to get a sneak peek into things before the release to everyone. So is, is this early access program set per user or do you have to turn it on or off for your entire organization? So it depends on the different feature. So for example, for the API access, um, if you click on opt-in settings, it'll tell you. So in this case, you'd have to opt in for an entire organization. But in the future, we will have some that'll be network specific and we aren't ruling out the possibility of user specific in the future. But I will say it is primarily based on organizations right now with the odd one being network specific.
So the reason why this page is super impactful, and I've actually got some feedback from customers themselves, um, is that it allows them to not only try new features, but also preparing um, their network admins. For example, I had a customer tell me that they toggled on and off the magnetic design system um, early access program, so that way they could take screenshots so they could then train their network admins to prepare them for when this is launched all across dashboard. So by having the early access, it can really set our customers up for success. So talking about consistency across pages, I mentioned that we had updated two pages, and the second one is our access points page. And seeing as we couldn't really see the switch page earlier, um, I'll bring it up here so you can see it. As you can see, it's basically the exact same format as the previous page. So that way, when you're going in to monitor your devices, you can understand that you can click the same buttons and they'll do the same thing regardless of what portion of our application you're on. So another thing that I did want to call out is that we have a huge focus on customer feedback. And with NextGen Dashboard, we implemented a new tool to collect feedback. And this is our beta feedback tool located on the right-hand side of Dashboard. So by clicking this tab, you're able to provide generic or specific feedback. And if you provide specific feedback, you can actually click the part portion of the page that you want to provide feedback on. So for example, if I wanted to say something about this card here that says alerting, I can give it a score, I can write why I like or don't like it, and then I can provide my email address if I wanna be reached out to by someone on the team. And the reason this is huge is even though we had a give your feedback button previously, this allows you to tell us exactly what you like or don't like on a page. In the past, I've had someone say, I don't like the search button, for example, but if there's multiple on the page, I'm not sure which one we wanna be fixing. So it allows us to better understand our customers' needs so we can iterate and make the changes they wanna see. I'd love to dive into our global organization overview. So like I mentioned, part of NextGen Dashboard is scale, and we want to make sure that we're supporting our customers regardless of their size, whether it's our smallest or our largest customer. And part of this is our global organization overview page, which will replace our MSP portal. So this isn't actually released yet, and it will be going into public beta later on this calendar year. Um, so it will be very soon, but we focused on improved performance as well as having new features that were highly requested from user feedback. For example, the ability to export data as a CSV file, and the ability to see unused licenses in a per-organization way. So rather than just tell you about it, I do want to show you again. So, okay, so this is our global organization overview page. And for this, you're able to view multiple organizations, how many networks are in each organization, the license status, the license expiry date, as well as how many unused licenses you have per organization. So this was highly requested information and can make it easier to monitor multiple organizations. Additionally, this page was built with performance in mind, and there's no limit to how many devices, organizations, or networks can be monitored. Um, what you can see that's different than the current MSP portal is we've actually added more columns here. So if we scroll over, whoops, um, scroll over here, you'll be able to see that we've added MV, MG, and MT, because we want to make sure that you'll be able to see the counts of devices for every, de every device that we have under the Meraki um, platform. So you're able to also search by license model as well as license status. So if you were interested to see how many organizations are going to be expiring soon, for example, you can just click expire and then it lists them all out so you can understand which organizations require your immediate attention. We also have the networks tab. So with this, you're able to view every network, which organization it's a part of, as well as the network type, usage, clients, tags, and help. So because this is just a demo network, unfortunately, I don't have any information going on for the health here. However, it will be different colors so you can visually see how your different networks are doing. For example, if there's over 95% of network uptime, then it would be green. 75 to 95 would be yellow, et cetera, making it easy to get a quick snapshot of what's going on in your organizations and networks. And lastly, we have network tags. So you're able to create tags and understand um, you can basically sort by different tags and you're able to do things like, for example, tagging things as your European networks. So you can search and understand what's happening for all networks with that tag at the same time. And like I mentioned before, every single one of these pages you can export, export to CSV. I did want to say that we have come a really long way with the Meraki dashboard. We really care deeply about customer feedback and making sure we're creating the best experiences for our users. And there's a lot of exciting changes coming down the pipeline that we're really excited to share with you in the future. Does anyone have any questions? So I have a question. Um, 
for the section where you showed uh, where you can check to see if you have licenses expiring, is that a configurable field? Like, can I decide how close to expiring a license is? Um, off the top of my head, I don't believe, I believe that's a fixed, like within our system, like how many days you are. Um, and I think, I want to say it's 90 days, but I can double check and get back to you. Um, but that is a great idea. And I'd love to bring that feedback to the team. Yeah, it does look like you could uh, sort on the date of expiration to get at what's expiring within the next 90 days or whatever. Yes, yeah, you can definitely sort. 